His name is Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner. He know, his name is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. He is the Adonai. He is Jehovah. He is the I am. He is the everlasting Father. He is called the Prince of Peace. He is my God. I serve no other God. I have no other allegiance but with the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That is my God. Come on, I want you to say that. That is my God. That is my God. Amen and amen. You are welcome to, to be seated. That is my God. Amen. I Blessed be the name of God, the one that was. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Amen. And uh, I just wanted to, this morning's message for me is very, very important. But before I, I get into the message of the Lord this morning, uh, God sent me with a message here. And I even, even though I know that there is, um, Somerset is with us right now. Uh, just get the video for me guys, ready here in Pretoria. Um, but I have a word from heaven for you. And because I have a word from heaven for you, I want to concentrate on the word this morning to get you to the other side. And even of all the people, I want all the people that are watching us, even after you've done your, your times in the different cities, go back to the word and listen to the word. Because if it comes from here, it counts for everybody. Amen. I first want to show you just a video with Somerset. With, listen, I am so ridiculously, I, I am so blessed by God. God is the one that can repair anything. And I tell you, uh, as I'm going to share the video now with you again of Somerset West, I am so excited to go to Cape Town because I know the Lord is sending us with a word from heaven. I know the Lord is sending us to bring up a, a, a message to a people there. Yesterday I was, I was praying, the Lord said to me, Gebhard, I have allotted people in that city that I will take in this hour to a high place and I'll move with them in signs, wonders and miracles. So I want to just show you here and uh, just a video again and uh, with everybody else with us online. In accordance to a heavenly dream and in obedience to the Lord, Empower Church Maine has started to move across South Africa under the leadership of Gebhardt and Shannon Berend. God spoke prophetically about four stars, including Pretoria, our Jerusalem, Durban, Somerset West and Port Elizabeth. Our first star, Durban, was planted in 2022 and it has become a vibrant 500 plus member church under our spiritual son and daughter, Pastors Ruan and Lana Foster. They are already heading towards Vision 1000. Furthermore, in obedience to God, the vision now has expanded to Somerset West. The call of God on Somerset West is clear and we will move into our new building on the 16th of April, 2023. As a national church family, we want you to partner with us as we fulfill the command of the Lord. Empower Church Somerset West is perfectly situated in the busiest business and retail area with literally thousands of people passing us by. We are located for purpose, positioned for power. Empower Church is not a name, it is a calling and now a home for people in three cities. Empower Church Somerset West is now. Thanks. In accordance to a heavenly dream and in obedience to the Lord. Next week Sunday what I'll do here um, in Pretoria, I'm going to show you some of the progress and some of the things. Right now, there's uh, Somerset is with us this morning, still online. Uh, on that side, we've already begun of so many things. Uh, the church is painted, the chairs is in, uh, the, the stage of the altar is being established there, or built, finished, uh, almost there. Um, and, um, and so, but I'll bring you pictures because you have to see. Amen. The good thing is, if you go to Durban now, there's a, there's a, uh, a church there for you. And again, if Durban is watching, some of them still ask me, 29 Salisbury Avenue, please go there. 
But this morning, I want to again say very clearly that everybody can understand, this is Jerusalem. And what we do in Jerusalem matters in Judea, that's Durban. What we do in Judea makes us move um, to Samaria. Samaria is our Somerset West. And I believe that the Lord has established us there very specifically for the supernatural. Come on, who of you believe you are sitting in a supernatural church that believes in a supernatural God? That uh, we, are not, we are not anything else but supernatural people. That you, listen, whether you believe it or not, you are sitting right next to a revivalist. That was a good place to say amen. You are sitting next to a revivalist. You are sitting next to the standards, the, the status quo. You are sitting next to a miracle worker. They're right there next to you. Because in this church, that's who you are. Amen. But this morning, as we give on, again unto God, and then I'm going to get into the Word, I want us to understand that we are partnering in a vision. And we cannot do this without Pretoria, uh, quite frankly. And because it is just so, we can't do it without Pretoria, we can't do it without Durban. It is a family matter. Amen. And as we give to the Lord this morning, as you give your, your sacrifice to God, as you bring your tithe, as you bring your offering to God, I'm going to show you one or two things later on in the Word of the Lord. But I, I want us to give unto God um, because there is a lot that needs to be done still in Somerset West. And I will, um, I'll be uh, anything but honest if I don't say to you that is the truth. So we need people to partner with us. We need people to honor their, their words. And also we just need a partnership alongside. Is that okay? This church is a debt-free church. <coughs> we don't owe any man anything. Everything around us is owned by us. But as we move into another city, we need this church to partner with us. Here I look at millionaires, I look at people that are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You say to me, Pastor or Prophet, I'm not a millionaire. No, 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 no. Let me introduce you to you. You are a millionaire. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are healed, you are restored, you are set free. That's who you are. Any other thing is a lie. Um, amen. And so as we give unto God this morning, I want, you, I want your hearts to be connected to your seed. Because as we sow seeds, what's happening is God's giving us eternal harvest. This is the hour for the awakening of God. Amen. And so as we go this morning and give, and I want to even uh, speak to Somerset West right now. Guys, you are the carriers of the vision. You are the carriers right there. And you have to prepare your hearts for that is what to come. I tell you, nothing but the supernatural is coming to Somerset West. And so as you give on that side as well, it is, the Bible says when the house of the Lord got established, David needed to open up his treasure chest and give unto God. Are you there? And so as we go and give this morning, may you give of your, with your hearts into the vision. Can I ask you to do so? And Father, I thank you that right now that we are the carriers of the vision, the carriers of the supernatural, the carriers of the divine. Father, and I pray for Somerset West, wherever they are watching from now. Lord, and let the anointing as the anointing is here rest upon the people. Father, I pray, Lord, as the anointing is here right now, let it rest upon every seed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that right now by the spirit of might and power, by the Holy Spirit, that every seed that is sown will be divinely energized in this day in Jesus name father I understand your word says one man sows another man waters but God's bring the increase father I pray for every seed so now that the supernatural increase of the Lord will rest upon it in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray amen and amen and amen I want us to go and give unto God you can do so there at the back you can do so here in the front there at the back as well and uh, Somerset West you can go and give there as well as you are there right now and let's go guys let's move and let's be obedient uh to the lord the rest of this uh of all the details for everybody online will come online right now you can give like that thank you king jesus thank you king jesus thank you king jesus Thank 
We worship you, mighty one. We worship you, O King of Kings. We worship you. Take me into the holy of holy. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holy. Take the call, cleanse my lips, here I am. Take me in, take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the call, cleanse my lips. Here I am, one more time. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the call. Cleanse my lips. Here I am. Father, we thank you that you take the call, Lord, that you put it on our lips, Lord, in this day, in the name of Jesus the Christ. I thank you, Father, in this day that people get cleansed, set free, delivered, and made whole. Father, I thank you, Lord, for you are the God that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You don't change, you don't waver. You're not a man that you can lie. You're not a shadow that you can shift. And Father, I thank you that in this day, Lord, that the power of God will be evident upon the people. Father, I thank you that deliverance is in this house already. And Lord, that you're going to set the standard straight in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, Somerset West. We bless you in the name of the one, Jesus the Christ, the true God of heaven and earth. And all of in Pretoria say, I want to speak to you this morning about the altar of prayer. And as we go into this topic, I, uh, it's a burden in my spirit because the Lord took me into the spirit on various occasions over this last couple of days. And, and I want us to understand that God wants to establish an altar. You have to understand what is an altar. An altar is a place of commerce. An altar is a place of exchange. An altar is a place where heaven and earth meets. It is a place where God sets the record straight between heaven and earth. And I want us to understand, we, as we sit here this morning, we are altars. As I'm standing here, this is called an altar. It's not a stage because I'm not a, a comedian, nor am I a star. I am a son, and this makes it an altar. Are you there? Before me went a father. He paid blood. Before him went other people. And so you have to understand that this is an altar. Then I want you to understand this morning that as I was looking into this, the Lord said to me, Give it, I want you to let the people understand. Because as I was, yesterday as I was, as I was praying and during this whole week, I have a burning, a burn in, uh, how can I say, I've got a yearning in my heart for my country. I'm yearning for South Africa. I'm saying, Lord, have mercy on South Africa, please. And as I was praying, I was, Lord, what is, Lord, why, Lord? 
and I was calling on the name of God. I was like, Jesus, speak to me, please. What is happening in our country? And the Lord said to me, and I, and I, I want us to be clear on this, guys, is that we, the church, we have to rise up like never before in this hour. This is the hour of the church. And we have to rise up. You know, we cannot throw God out of our schools. We cannot go throw God out of our universities. We cannot throw God out and think it's going to go well of us. No, we need God in the schools. We need God in our universities. We need Him. He is the only one that can help. Are you there? We cannot have secret alliances with the devil on top and think that there's a God that's going to permit this. I tell you, He won't. God wants to destroy the agreements made in this country because God wants to save this nation. I am sorry to say, but I still believe that God has a plan with South Africa, and that plan is a plan of hope, that plan is a plan of life, that plan is a plan of peace. But He wants an altar. He wants His altar back. Are you there? He wants His altar back. And as I was taken into the Spirit, the Lord showed me um, how there was, there was many things, and I'll tell you about that as we go this morning. And we're going to pray together this morning into many of these things. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, verse number 18, the Bible says, praying always of all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereto, thereunto, with all perseverance and, and supplication for all the saints. I want you to see that praying always, the word praying always there is not every minute of the day. It means persistent prayer. We have to pray persistently. The Bible said pray persistently with all types of prayer and supplication. Where unto? With perseverance. Sometimes you have to persevere. You have to knock. The Bible says that door cannot stay closed. It has to go open. Then as I was looking at this, the Spirit of the Lord woke me up this morning of the Scripture, Matthew 5, 23, and it says this. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar. First be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. And when the Lord said this to me this morning, He said to the, this, on many of my people, they are in disagreement with their brothers and their sisters. Their gifts unto my altar means nothing to me because I came to reconcile and not to destroy. I want you to understand the spirit of poverty sometimes come into people's lives and it remains there because people have hearts that are divided before the Lord. The Lord wants one heart before Him. Are you are there? Are you with me? We are not permitted. I want to be very clear on this fact. As a Christian, you are not permitted to carry unforgiveness, offense, or bitterness in your heart and think you are okay with God. God has forgiven us of everything. We are not entitled to hold people to their sins. We hold them to forgiveness. Oh, hallelujah. You set people free and you let them go. You don't let them stay free in your head, nor let them stay free in your heart, nor let them stay free in your life because that devil will kill your destiny. It will kill your life and it will take everything that there is. You let them go. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Are you there? Come on, say amen to that. So what is prayer? Prayer is a petitioning to a superior. Prayer means that there's a government that is higher than us. Prayer means that there's a, there's a government established by Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number six, uh, chapter number nine, verse number six, upon his shoulders rest the government. And at this government, there will be no end. This government will crush any other government. I want you to understand that. It's on the government of Jesus, rest, or the government of God rest upon the shoulders of Jesus. And so I want you to understand what is prayer. And we're going to deal with certain things this morning prophetically. The Bible said, the Lord said this to me yesterday. You pray therefore, your prayer therefore has to go to a government. This government has given you promises. This promises gives you rights. So when you pray, when you go to God, when you go to the Father, you have to understand you do so based on the promises that that government gave, which gives you rights. Oh, come on, are you there? Are you with me? Just want to read for you. Hence you pray to access the promises based on the government's intentions. Can I say that again? Hence you pray to access the promises based on the government's intentions. Prayer, please listen to me. Prayer is not telling God what is wrong. Prayer is telling God what He promised. Oh, hallelujah. Can I get an amen here? 
Let me say it again. Prayer is not telling God what is wrong. Prayer is what it tells Him what He promised. Because there's a government. This government is represented by a king. This king has given us a word. And when we go to the Father, we go to the Father based on the king's word. Because the king's word gave us a promise. And on that promise we stand. Come on, are you with me? Does it make sense? And so you have to understand God. God is a watcher over His Word. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse number 12 says as God watches over His Word. He doesn't watch over your opinion. He doesn't watch over what some said or He said. He watches over His Word. And as I was in prayer for this church about this topic this morning, the Lord took me into a vision. And as the Spirit of the Lord took me into a vision, God started to show me how there was tongues that rose up in condemnation, in exaltation, and in gossip, slandering, backbiting against the people of God. I saw tongues, all tongues, that were raising up. And I saw, I said to the Lord, Lord, what is this that I see? What are these tongues that are so old against the people of God? And then the Lord said to me, these are tongues that spoken against my people. Listen to me carefully. And because these tongues are alive, because you have to understand that there's a voice that can speak against you. The Lord said to me, because these tongues are alive, what happens is the people lower their standard. Let me help you. There are doctors here this morning that are not doctors because somebody said you're bad in mathematics. There are lawyers here that are not lawyers because somebody's ridiculed you somewhere along the line. There are marriages here that are unwhole because a mom and a dad broke that marriage down long before it could ever start. There are sons and daughters in this place seated here. You walk with a spirit of rejection because somebody didn't approve of you. Those are tongues of condemnation and God wants to tear them down. God wants to break those tongues down because God wants to lift the standard. Come on, guys. God wants to lift the standard off you in this day because you are not what some say. You are what the Lord has said over your life. And in this day, there will be an eviction notice in this place that every devil that has spoken and every person that was used by whatever spirit except by the Holy Spirit, those things will lift out of people's lives in this day. Blessed be the name. And as I, I, I became angry in the spirit as the Lord showed me these things because I saw people's destinies being cut short. There are spirits assigned to cut people's destinies short. It's called the murder of the purpose. There are spirits that are assigned, they kill off people's destinies because people rise up in condemnation and, and conviction. Listen, it's our, not our job, Christians, to condemn. It is our, our job to con be convicted by the Holy Spirit. Are you there? There's no more judgment in God. God says the judgment is given to the Son. The Son judges all things. Come on, are you okay? So we go to the Father. Please listen to me very carefully. We go to the Father based upon Jesus. Every prayer that is not connected to an altar is just wishful thinking. I'll say that again. Every prayer that is not connected to an altar is wishful thinking. What does it mean? It means the following. Unless your prayer is connected to the cross of Jesus Christ, which was an altar between heaven and earth, unless you go that way, you cannot be answered by God. Because you cannot represent yourself in the heavens. Your good works cannot represent you. Your flesh cannot represent you. Uh, let me use an example. What is the big difference between us and Job? Job had no mediator. He had no advocate. He had nobody that could stand on his stead and on his behalf. He was alone and as the enemy attacked him, uh, and by the way, why did the enemy attack Job? Because God bragged about Job. And then the enemy started to attack Job. But Job didn't have an advocate. You and I have an advocate. We have a representation in the heavens. His name is Jesus Christ. So every accusation, listen to me carefully because we have to get this. Every accusation that is raised against you first is raised against the master. Oh, that should be a revelation for some of you. It's power what I'm saying. The Lord said to me that yesterday as I was, well, on Friday already. He says, prayer again is not telling God what is wrong. It tells Him what is promised. And then as I, was, as, I was, as I was praying and going into the spirit of this, the Lord said this to me. He said, many prayer altars are ineffective as the people praying has mixed it to foreign alliances. 
I'll say it again. Many prayer altars are ineffective as the people has mixed it with foreign alliances. And then the Lord, I put it in comma, in inverted commas, the Lord said, double-tongued minds and double-minded men will receive nothing from me. Double, double-tongued minds and double-tongued hearts will receive nothing from me. The Lord said to me, this is as idol worship before me. Are you there? I want us you, I want you to understand this. The Bible makes it very clear. And as I was, and I said, that's why I'm going to tell you various things today. As yesterday, the Lord spoke to me about this nation. And as I looked upon the nation, I saw two tongues. And as I looked upon these two tongues, the one of the tongue had a note on. The other tongue had poison dripping from it. And as I looked upon the tongue, I heard the Lord say to me, these are the tongues of people that on the one tongue they want to praise me, but on the other tongue they are condemning their own country. I cannot help them in their country if they condemn their nation. They have to worship me as the Lord their God. They have to humble themselves. And if they humble themselves and call out to me, I will heal the land. But that's the condition. Humility is the condition for a heavenly intervention. Come on, are you guys with me? Humility is the bedrock for heaven to intervene. Unless the people humble themselves, and it's not being about being spiritual. It's a bit doing what is right in spiritual protocol. There is laws established by God. And the first law for God to answer your prayer is humility. Unless you humble yourself, God cannot answer you. And that counts for many things. If you are arrogant in your heart, if you are proudful in your heart, if you are stubborn in your heart, God cannot answer a prayer like that. It is the humble of heart that God answers. It is the contrite of spirit that He answers. And it's the broken that He answers. I can tell you, the Bible makes it clear. He says, the Bible says the broken heart and the contrite spirit can ascend the heel of the Lord. There's only two. The Lord says there's only two places I dwell. Please listen to me very clearly. There's only two places the Lord dwells. The Lord says I dwell on the highest heights. Then the Lord says I dwell over the broken. Two places. Unless you're broken, you can't be dwelling with God. And unless you're holy, you can't ascend the heel of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want us to understand. The Lord said to me, many prayer altars are ineffective as the people are praying has mixed it with foreign alliances. In South Africa, we've mixed things. We cannot mix things. As the Christians this morning, we cannot mix things. There's one God. I might become unpopular for saying this, but there's one God. I cannot serve God and. It's not Jesus plus, it's Jesus. Come on, church. It's Jesus. I serve Jesus. If I don't serve Jesus, then you're not serving Jesus. Then you're going to hell. If I serve Jesus, then serve Jesus. But you can't serve Jesus and alcohol. You can't serve Jesus and drugs. You can't serve Jesus and pornography. I'm sorry, it's not judgmental. But there has to be something in your heart that says, I serve Jesus. God requires holiness. Power will come from heaven if the people humble themselves and become a holy people. Oh, hallelujah. You see, God, I want you to understand, God's Spirit entered this world through agreement of man. God understands, and I, and I don't want to stay long on this. I'll teach you another day on this. God understands that He needs a man to agree with Him before He can move on the planet. God could come as a Spirit. God is a Spirit. But he wanted agreement with a man. Even the celestial beings, the angels understand this law. God will do nothing on the earth unless he does it by a man. I'll say it again. God will do nothing on the earth unless he does it by a man. The angels understand the territories and the laws given to man and to themselves. That's why the angel Gabriel, when he wants, when God wants to save um, the, the Gentiles, the angel Gabriel comes to Cornelius and he says, Cornelius, go get Peter. Because I cannot preach to you the gospel. No angel can preach the gospel. It's not given to them. The Bible says the gospel is a mystery unto angels because man will judge the angels. Come on, let's correct that. Are you with me? That's why the angel Gabriel goes and look for Peter. It says, Peter, you must come. But I want you to see, it was another man that opened up the heavens. His name was Cornelius. 
Cornelius by his prayer and his arms opened up the heavens. What is his arms? It's giving. His prayer and his giving opened up the heavens. So the angel of the Lord descended. In other words, Cornelius' prayers and arms was so heavily before the Lord that a heavenly portal went open and the angel had to descend and the word of the Lord could spread. Oh, hallelujah. May you be the agent that opens up the uh, surrounding, a suburb, a city for your God. May you be the person that is so extravagant in your giving and in your prayer that God can send help to you, that you become the carrier of light and love and hope. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, you must excuse my passion, but I, I, I want to deal with this, this devil. And as I was looking into the Spirit, what happened was, as I was looking into the Spirit, the Lord showed me, I saw tongues running everywhere. All tongues. And then I saw these tongues going into the feet of people. And as these tongues went into the feet of people, you have to understand, gossip is... Gossip is character assassination. If you gossip about somebody, you are assassinating their character in the spirit. And God will not hold you as a judge unaccountable for what you've judged. He says, have mercy for I have mercy. For what measure you use will be measured against you. Even your thoughts is known before the Lord. Ezekiel chapter number 8, you can go and study it. In Ezekiel chapter number 8, God says to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, uh, go deeper, open up the, the door. He opens up the door. He says, go deeper. And Ezekiel goes deeper in Ezekiel chapter number 8. Let me read this for you. It's powerful. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy that the people may hear. Then he showed Ezekiel even greater abomination. He said unto, unto him, Son of man, dig now into the wall. And when I had digged into the wall, behold a door. And he said unto me, go in. And behold the wicked abominations that, that, that they do there. So I went in and saw. I went in and saw. What Ezekiel saw horrified him. The walls of the room were filled with the paintings of every form of creeping things, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel. What was facing these walls were the 70 elders of Israel swinging censers of incense. They were worshiping the Spirit behind the paintings. The Holy Spirit told Ezekiel, this is the, what is happening in the minds of the Israelites. And the Lord heard it. In other words, you cannot entertain a thought and you think God doesn't hear. Are you with me? South Africa is broken not because of this or that, but because things are not right in the Spirit. We have to put things right in the Spirit. How do we put things right in the Spirit? We humble ourselves. We call out to God. He heals the land. Come on, guys. Is there anybody that is with me? And as I saw these tongues, I saw many tongues running like that. And I saw the tongues going up into people's legs, little veins everywhere. And then I saw sicknesses happening in people's lives. I saw brokenness. I saw poverty. And I said, Lord, what is this that I see? The Lord said, it is the voice of accusation against my people. And then the Lord said to me yesterday afternoon, He said, this day you deal with it, son. This day you break every remnant. You break every tongue off, every tongue of accusation, because I'm going to lift it from my people. Come on, do you believe that today? May every form of disbelief not be found in you in this day. Believe the Lord your God, the Bible says, and you shall prosper. Believe His prophets and you will prosper. Then the Bible says, uh, listen to me carefully. I want to help you this morning. Um, two final scriptures. Then He spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart, saying, there was a certain, a certain city, a judge, who did not fear God nor regard man. Nor now there was a widow in that city, and she came to Him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. The word adversary there, please note that. The word, word adversary is there, is the word antidikas. The word antidikas in the Greek means anti the rights you have as a child of God. Antidikas. And he would, he would not throw out. But afterward he said with himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest she continually coming wears me out. Please note that. Please note this lady, she went the whole time to the judge. Then the judge eventually said, Unless I answer this woman, she will not leave me alone. 
Jesus said, listen to Jesus' words just after that. Then the Lord says, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long of them. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. So what the Bible says is this, God wants to answer us, but it takes persistence. Pray continually. Prayer is in sacrifice and it's an altar that has to be in your life. Are you there? It is a place of commerce. The devil even understands this. That's why, for an example, let me just help you. That's why the devil, whenever you want to have greater power in the spiritual realm, what you do, you have to establish an altar. Once you've established an altar, you have to put a price on that. It's true what I'm saying. The higher, the more you want, the more power you want, because you have to understand, authority belongs to men. It's been given to us. Power belongs to the spiritual realm. Both authority and power is in Jesus Christ. So He has both. Are you there? So in the spiritual realms, what you have to understand, even in the enemy's camp, the enemy understands us. He makes a, he makes a, a altar for himself. Then, what he, if you want more power in the, in the on the dark side, what happens is this: you have to put more down, more sacrifice needs to happen. Come on, are you guys okay? It's true. That's why there will be no Sangoma, no traditional healer that doesn't have an altar. It's a place of commerce. Come on, where did the devil get that from? He's a copycat, he's not a creator. Where did the, where did the devil get that from? Right through the whole Bible, there's altars. Then suddenly there comes an ultimate altar. It was the altar of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God Himself put His stake, took His Son, and He put His Son upon that altar. He paid a price that no man can ever pay. And with that price tag, He said, now I deal with sin, past, present, and future. Now I deal with sickness, disease, and poverty. Now I deal with every devil that can ever come. And by the blood of the Lamb, when that blood started to drip, from that altar, hallelujah. Suddenly the Bible says the veil gets torn and God Himself lets Himself out of the Holy of Holies. Don't we understand that the Son has been placed on the altar? My God, how can we negotiate our lives if the Son was on the altar? How can we negotiate with the devil? There is nothing in me that agrees with Him. Come on, church. There has to be a ferociousness in our own hearts that say unto ourselves, I don't know about you, but I can feel the anger of God in this. There has to be somebody in you that says in your family, that says in your lifetime, up to here and here it ends because I'm going to serve the Lord my God. Listen, I have seen and I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking, I'm seeing what I'm talking about. The Bible says in Habakkuk 2, 1, see and say, son. See and say. And, so, and we will deal with this devil because it has to lift from the people. There are leaders in the body of Christ that have been, been assassinated by their members because their members talk, 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 talk. It's true what I'm saying. Stop the talking. There are wives who are killing your husbands by your tongue. Stop it, they cannot be what you don't declare. Declare over them what you wanna see. There are children here that are, that are broken because their parents reject them. Oh, how be it far, woe unto us if we are with Satan on this. We are not the accusers. There's one accuser, his name is the devil. Come on church, are you with me? And the Lord instructed me, that's why I'm passionate about this. The Lord instructed me, He said, tear down this altar. He says, break it over my people because I want to lift the lid of them. Now people here, you are not in business. You've been fighting all your life to get ahead in business. You're not in business and you're not doing well. It's because people are talking against you. They are robbing you before you can rise. We are all, when we hear about, listen, you have to understand that's why prayer is so powerful because prayer lifts the gates. It's a prayer of persistency. You pray 
Raboto robot rabakata tayenere. Only my vocal cord sounds like me. As you sit here, nobody sounds like you. Nobody has your iris. Your vocal cords and your iris just belongs to you. So if I start to pray, as I start to pray, suddenly the Father says, that's the Son, that's Jesus, that's, that's Gebat praying. And when I go to the Father, let me just help myself, I always talk there. As I pray, I say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit comes, Romans 8, verses 26. How be it, we do not know what we need to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit prays with us, with utterings and with groanings that we do not understand. Now, Him and I, we pray together. My mind is unfruitful, but my spirit is not. And as I pray, I worship Him. As I pray, I lift up the name of the Son. As I pray, and the Bible says, what happens in the spiritual realm, depending how long the gates are there and for how long they've stood in the place, but there will come a time where the gates have to lift. I pray you get what I'm saying. Help me, Jesus. You see, prayer is not connected to an altar. It's just wishful thinking. I said it before, I'll say it again. Your prayer has to be connected to an altar. You have to go through the cross to God. His Father God. He's not just Father. He's Father God. You enter the throne boldly because you need grace. You need mercy. But you must never forget that He's God. I never go to God as a pastor, as a prophet, or as anything like that. I don't use titles when it comes to God. I go to God. God, here is the one. Lord, here am I. Lord, you've chosen me. And here I am, your son. Here I am. The one that you called when I was young. Here I am, Lord. And then I bring to remembrance I said, Lord, you called me. My mom said it to me. You called me when I was in my mother's womb. You called me, Psalm 87. Here I am. Help me, Lord. I've learned to be a, to be of Him, not to request always things. God is not a slot machine. See, I'll, I'll close of this. If you, if you can come to a place in your life, hey, you have to petition the Father. Say, when is prayer enough? Until you see it. If you have not seen it, you have time to pray still. But God will not do anything on the earth. Like Miles Monroe says it, prayer is the license for God to intervene. Unless a man prays, God will do nothing. Why? It, it's not that he cannot. He will not. Because he subjected himself to his word. It was his choice. You can be as spiritual as you want to be. God himself said it. He said, I subject myself to my word. Now I give you the earth. That's why, listen, God never... <laughs> let me end with these two thoughts. God never gives the ownership of the earth away. He gives the dominion away. How do I know? Because when... Please listen. And that's why I know there's hope for South Africa. In Sodom and Gomorrah, God wants to wipe off a whole group of people. He wants to take all of them out. All of them out. Why? He is the one that can still dispossess people. He can move them. And then suddenly Abraham, go, whoa, 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 God, there's, there's righteous people here. Then your Bible tells you about other stories where God opens up the earth. He swallows people. Come on, are you there? That God has not changed. Same God, hey guys. 
And so this morning, I want to, this is where I want to go to. The Lord sent me here of a message. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 25, and I'll close with that. Come to terms quickly at the earliest opportunity with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way to court so that your opponent does not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the God and you are thrown into prison. Then, as I said this, the Lord showed me on the scripture of Matthew 5, 25, how people are sitting in prison cells, not physically, spiritually, because of these things. One, God showed me tongues of the spies, tongues of gossip, tongues of slander, tongues of accusation that had entered the heart of man. Then I saw how these tongues wrapped themselves around people. And even those sitting in the courts of accusations were polluted. Because if you just sit and you hear, and you think, oh, I can just hear. No, you have become a partaker of the accusation. If a brother and a sister talks, you say, excuse me, you are not the judge. He is. <laughs> Who do we think we are? We're not God. Are we there? We must never let our minds take us where the Spirit is not agreeing with us. Let me just say that while I'm here. You can have no thought that is not scripturally based and say that's God. Not one thought you can say is God if it's not backed up by this Bible. And so this morning, I want to deal with these things because I saw it in the Spirit. And the Lord said to me, I'm going to tear down this altar and there'll be no more. Come on, guys. Are you there? Are you with me? And so this morning, if that's you, if you are sitting here in this church, you're saying, that's me. I know. I know that there's tongues. Uh, there's tongues of accusation. There's tongues of, there's tongues of accusation. There's tongues of despise. There's tongues of slander. There's tongues of condemnation. As I said to you, I, I shared the vision again. I saw how these tongues went into the feet of people, wrapped themselves up in the DNA of people. And the Lord said, I will destroy them. And my people will break off and they'll rise. They'll rise. They'll rise. And so if that's you this morning, I, I want us to stand. Because I want to pray for us. That this, we're going to pray in the Spirit, but we're going to break this stuff off. Come on, you know who you are. Holy Spirit can talk to you immediately. Look at this. I want to, ask you something today we the spirit of deliverance is in the house and God wants to break this thing off you are you with me and I want to say to you today that as we as we make ourselves right before the Lord we do this through humility come on are you there this church is packed but it is okay the Lord wants to do an exchange today and I want to break this permanently. Is that okay? But we need to do two things today. I want us, and I know it's going to take a moment or so, but I want you just there we are. I want you to take a step forward, left, right. What I actually want, I want as many people at the altar as possible, but yeah, let's do it. We have got time. I want, I want us to come out of our seats. I want us to come to the altar. I know this is, uh, you just need to move quickly now. Just make space because all of us must do this. Come on. And the rest, if that's not applicable to you, that's fine. But I want everybody to come to the altar. Quickly, quickly, you must move now. Move. Uh, the volunteers, just be, just look out for everybody's stuff. Come on, guys, just stand against the altar. Come, 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 come. Quickly, 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 quickly. Let's do this. Quickly, 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 quickly. Uh, just spread. You guys can just spread. It's fine. You can just spread. Just spread. Just spread as far as you can. Just spread, just spread, just spread, just spread. Bora bakata to the under. Just spread. Everybody will not be able to fit down this aisle. Just spread, just spread. Church, I want you to lift your hands. 
I want everybody to lift their hands. Everybody online, I want you to lift your hands as well. There we are watching me from right now. I want us to go to the Lord our God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, everybody lift your hands, please, as high as you can. Lift your hands, everybody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lift those hands. Now pray with me. Pray with me. Say with me. Let's just pray. 30 seconds in the Spirit. Come pray. Pray with me. Come on, guys. Now I want everybody, in everybody, pray with me the following. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of every sin of my mouth spoken by listening and or sitting in the midst of those that scorn. I repent of all sins of my ancestors, any bloodline, family, on my father and on my mother's side that made agreements knowingly or unknowingly. I repent of all thoughts entertained and worship through which I exalted myself in my own eyes. Forgive me, O oh God, for the tongue of condemnation instead of the cloak of humility. I condemn, I condemn every evil tongue risen up against me. Father, right now, release angelic help to break down demonic altars demonic alliances in the name of Jesus Christ Father God right now in the name of Jesus Christ uproot all forms of alignment of agreement of vows or sacrifices made in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus, tear down every altar of witchcraft, sudden death, stagnation, late marriage, unfruitfulness, every evil thing that has risen up against me and my family spiritually or physically in the name of Jesus Christ right now catch fire 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 in Jesus name be burned up right now I release upon you the fire of the most high God be burned up in Jesus' name, Father God, I put my faith in the altar of the blood of Jesus Christ, which speaks on my behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. And in this day, I declare I am free. I am free. Oh, come on, I am free. Yes. Now lift your hands. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Father, I want to pray. Lord, right now we release upon the people, Father, as you've showed me. Lord, I release upon the people that that is due unto them that couldn't come through their families, 
that stops that got stuck in a bloodline lord that got stuck somewhere right now father your word declares the blessing of god is up to a thousand generations and so father we speak right now that every single of these people will move to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ promises shall be released health shall be released finances shall be released business shall be released in the name of jesus father we humble ourselves we call out to you in this day in jesus name Pray this last prayer with me. Say, Father, we humble ourselves before your throne. We thank you for your mercy and your kindness to us. Now pray with me for our country. Say, South Africa, we speak to you in this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be destroyed. You will not be destroyed. For we are more than one that are righteous unto God in the nation of South Africa. Father God, have mercy on South Africa. Forgive, Father, every sin that was committed against you. We repent on their behalf. Have mercy, O God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen and amen and amen. Amen and amen and amen. Amen and amen. Oh, you can just celebrate yourself. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the freedom. Just celebrate. You're welcome to return to your seats as as possible. Here it comes. Bora bakata tabiandra boshara. Can you sense in the spirit how the things are shifting? Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. I want you, there we as you are returning to your seats. The rest of the people, will you stand for me? Everybody, come on. Oh, blessed be the presence of the Lord that's in this place. Come church, stand. As you are returning to your seats, I want you to stand. Church, the God that is the God of Abram, Isaac, Jacob is your God. He doesn't change. I want you. I want. To, I want you to do two things. One. I want to ask you, and then I'm going to pray for you. On Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock, this Wednesday evening coming now, 6 o'clock, I want to ask all of you to come to pray, come and pray with me. Will you come and pray? 6 o'clock, we're going to do spiritual warfare. 6 o'clock. I want you, even if it's inconvenient, I want you to come. Because the Lord has asked this from me, and I want to ask you, tomorrow, tomorrow you can, um, I'll speak to you now about tomorrow. Tuesday you can have public holiday but come Wednesday evening 6 o'clock will you do so and we can spend time the Lord is doing things in the spirit realm um, and we have to do this by prayer amen secondly I want to pray for all of you and we're going to agree together not one hair of your head will be touched and I want to pray for you that in this day I felt the Lord say that I must pray for you like that today. That tomorrow, Tuesday, you'll be fine. Because we will not tolerate the spirit of fear. We will not tolerate that devil. Are you there? So don't be afraid. God is with you. Um, just listen to the Holy Spirit. That's what you must do. Are you there? But I want you to lift your hands. You refuse that devil. That spirit of fear. You refuse it. I tell you they will not come ill to you. You refuse that spirit. Father, thank you that I can pray over this precious people that I love with my whole life, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that your hand is upon them. I pray not one hair on their head shall be touched. In Jesus' name. These people are highly favored by God. 
Lord, these people, my people, your people, Lord, Lord, they are destined for greatness. Lord, I pray that in this week they'll see the supernatural. In this week they'll see the abundance. I pray that in this week that the jobs will be aligned. Lord, I see, oh my Lord, Lord, I see the things that are flooding towards people that has been stagnant for long. May it come now, God. May it spring forth like a fire. May it jump out like a river. Like, may it be like a fountain of living life. Lord, I speak over them that they will know and I declare over them that they are the head and not the tail. And in all their ways, they shall prosper for the Lord their God is with them in the name of Jesus Christ. Your houses will be protected. Your businesses shall be protected. Your children shall be protected. Everything that you carry and is with you and under your name shall be protected in the name of of Jesus Christ we pray father this is the word of the Lord that you prosper us and that you help us that you assist us by day and assist us by night for the Lord my God is with me and the victorious church says come on give Jesus Christ a massive shout of praise amen and amen and amen Amen. So I want to ask you again, come and join us. Come and join me Wednesday night. Is that okay? Empower. Will you join me Wednesday evening, six o'clock? Do we have a date? I'll come dressed up and smiling. You too. And then we deal with the devil together. Amen. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. I love you, Empower. I'll see you Wednesday. Thank you, Pastor Eric. Well, good morning, Empower Church. Welcome to be seated. I just want to share some announcements with you. If you can give me another five minutes or so of your time, and then we're going to send you home, have a good Sunday lunch, and be back for church at five. Seeing that Tuesday is a public holiday, um, who's off tomorrow? Who's not going to work tomorrow? Just a quick raise of hands. Keep them raised. We're just taking a mental note here. None of you have got an excuse to be here tonight. Thank you. We've taken note there from the back. Um, we want to invite all of you, not just those of you that raise your hand. Come and join us tonight. It's going to be a very special evening. And for those of you that don't know as yet, our Children's Church PM service is also running as of last week. So you've got no excuse to not bring your kids, bring them. We would love to spend time with them in the mine hall. Um, you can check them in um, as you go into the mine hall. Starts at five as well. But come and join us tonight. It's going to be an awesome time together. Then please note, we've got a whole lot of exciting things happening this week. You heard about you, uh, Wednesday night's prayer meeting. Friday night, we have our movie Under the Stars. It's clearly where the young people are at on this side. Um, all our youth, all our students, all our young adults, you're invited to come and join us Friday evening right here at church. We're going to have a movie under the stars, free of charge. I see Wade, Jamie, Pastor Milani, they're all there at the back. If you've got any questions, go and chat to them after the service, but invite some friends, invite your neighbor, invite your whoever and bring them. Say, listen, let's do a movie under the stars. It's going to be a beautiful time together on Friday night. All our young people, please take note. Then please note as well, Sunday, the 26th, this coming Sunday, we have our family celebration. I was hoping for more woos and amens than that. It's going to be an awesome Sunday. Um, please note, there's no evening service next coming, this coming Sunday, but we will have our 8 and our 10 service as per normal and directly after our 10 o'clock service, around about this time, we'll be heading out. There's going to be fires burning, pop, sauce, juice, kids entertainment, the full works. You just bring your meat, you bring your neighbor, you bring a good attitude, and whatever else you want to throw into your picnic basket. Um, if you want to do dessert, please bring some for me as well. I'd love to taste of your dessert. But come and join us Sunday. Um, and just, it's, an, it's a brilliant opportunity to invite your neighbor, that colleague of yours, somebody that's not really up to church, say, hey, but we're going to bry at church on Sunday. Come and join me. Bring them, come and spend the day with us. It's going to be a beautiful time of celebration. There's one or two special things that we'll be doing as part of our service as well. And we really don't want you to miss out on that. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time together. If you haven't registered for EBI 2, registrations are open. It starts middle April. We'll send more communication out as we go. But registrations are open. Please also take note, Easter service is around the corner. Can you believe it? 
And um, for those of you that don't know, Good Friday will be on the 7th of April and then our Resurrection Sunday, 9 April. So that Friday, we have one service, nine o'clock. If you've ever been to Empower Church Easter Friday, good morning, good morning, good Friday service, well, good morning, um, we will have a full house. So come early, grab a seat, beautiful time of celebration. And then on Sunday, we will only have the eight and the 10 o'clock service again, no 5 p.m. service. And um, we're really looking forward to a brilliant time of Easter and just spending that together, celebrating what Jesus has done. Celebrate the resurrected Christ. Come on. That's our time to shine. It's a beautiful time. And I want to just throw that out to you as a congregation. It's a beautiful time for us to reach out to the lost. That's uh, uh, the kind of a weekend that we really want to trust the Lord for people to come in to salvation, come back to the Father's house. So invite some neighbors, friends, say, come and join me. Good Friday, Resurrection Sunday. It's going to be beautiful. Thank you so much. Won't you stand? I'd love to pray for you. That's all from my side. Oh yeah, last thing before I forget. Out love. Thank you for everybody that's partnered with us. <laughs> Pastor Given would have not taken kindly to me for getting that. Out love. Not this coming weekend, the weekend after, the last weekend of March. Um, we have our Out Love Outreach Initiative that the youth is doing. And I just want to say, youth, you guys are amazing. Can't wait to see what you're going to do. And, um, and we want to ask you as a congregation, Continue to partner with us. We need some non-perishable foods. We want to fill some hungry stomachs in our community. And we need as much as what we can get. So if you've got some non-perishable foods lying around at home, or you're doing some grocery shopping this week, get some stuff for us. Bring it to church. There's some tables that you can drop it off. And thank you for those that have participated with us already. Can I pray for you? I want to bless you this morning. It's our privilege as a house, as a leadership to speak the blessing of God over you and over your family in this day. And Father, I thank you for every single person that have come to church the morning, this morning, every person that's watching online, even people that will be watching the stream at a later stage. Father, in the beautiful and in the powerful name of Jesus, I bless every single person that's in this place and every person that's watching. I bless their families. I bless every area of their lives. Everything that their hand touches, every place where their feet trots. Father, thank you that you are the God that goes before them. And you have said, wherever we put our foot, there we will have dominion. And I pray over them that they will have a week of dominion, that they will live in the power, the resurrected power of Christ, that wherever they go, that people will see the light of God shine from them, the fire of God burning in our eyes, the words of love found on our lips, the embrace of grace that's found in our Heavenly Father will be our embrace in this week. And Father, wherever we go, we thank you that your kingdom will come and your will be done. I bless your people in this day in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that prayer, can we do a loud amen together? Amen, amen and amen. Bless you. Thank you for being with us. Have an amazing Sunday. Stick somebody for coffee on your way out and we'll see you at five. Have a lovely Sunday afternoon.